Thanks for tuning in to this week's news recap. First headline. OpenSea's August volume blows even traditional internet marketplaces out of the water. NFT marketplace OpenSea just completed a $3 billion month, according to data from Dune Analytics, that accounts for a near 10x of its previous high from July when it hit $325 million in volume. OpenSea is far and away the leading NFT marketplace. According to Decrypt, the next largest platform is Axie Infinity's marketplace, which did $820 million in volume last month. CryptoPunks came in third, posting $667 million in volume on its Larva Lab site. It's not just doing well for an NFT marketplace. OpenSea's August volume matched 16-year-old Etsy's entire second quarter volume. The popular arts and crafts site did $3.04 billion in volume in Q2 2021. eBay's average monthly volume sits at roughly $7.3 billion. OpenSea would only need a two and a half times increase in volume to catch eBay. Next headline. The SEC alleges BitConnect swindled retail traders out of $2 billion. On Wednesday, the Securities and Exchange Commission filed an action against BitConnect, its founder, and its top U.S. promoter, alleging that they defrauded retail investors out of $2 billion through an unregistered and fraudulent offering of digital assets. Specifically, the SEC's complaint targets BitConnect's lending program. The regulator claims that BitConnect tricked investors into depositing money onto the platform by falsely advertising a volatility trading bot that would generate large returns. Instead of deploying the capital, the SEC alleges that BitConnect siphoned investor funds to personal wallets to the tune of $2 billion. Quote, we allege that these defendants stole billions of dollars from retail investors around the world by exploiting their interest in digital assets, said Laura Shalev Miraban, Associate Regional Director of the SEC's New York Regional Office. We will aggressively pursue and hold accountable those who engage in misconduct in the digital asset space. In other regulatory news, SEC Chair Gary Gensler continued to set his sights on crypto, giving a talk to the European Parliament's Committee on Economic and Monetary Affairs. In his speech, the two areas he cited specifically as needing attention were trading and lending platforms, quote, whether they be centralized or so-called decentralized finance platforms, and stablecoins, which he noted were involved in almost three quarters of crypto trades. Tether has petitioned the New York Supreme Court to block Coindesk and other publications from receiving documents revealing the composition of Tether reserves over the past few years. The stablecoin issuer claims that releasing such information would tilt the competitive playing field against Tether in favor of other stablecoins. Avanti, a digital asset bank, filed an application to become a Federal Reserve member bank, becoming the first crypto bank to seek federal supervision directly from the Fed itself. The move, if approved, would allow Avanti access to the Fed's payment system and thereby quicker and cheaper order processing. Next headline. Binance.com added to investor alert list by Singapore regulator. The Monetary Authority of Singapore, the main financial regulator in that country, has placed Binance.com on its investor alert list. Its country-specific site, Binance.sg, is a separate entity and is not on the list. Last week, Binance.sg hired Richard Tang, the former chief regulatory officer of the Singapore Stock Exchange, as its CEO. Binance.com, however, has come under regulatory scrutiny and pressure these last few months, with multiple jurisdictions from Europe to Asia making enforcement actions or issuing warnings about the exchange. Additionally, its U.S. entity, Binance.us, suffered a blow recently when recently hired CEO Brian Brooks, also a former regulator, left within a few months. In an interview with The Information this week, Binance.com CEO Chengpeng Zhao known as CZ, said, quote, Regulators around the world are looking at crypto, and when they look at crypto, they do look at us first, given that we are by far the largest player in the market globally. In the interview, CZ also said Binance.us plans to go public within three years. Next headline, Jack Dorsey plans to make Bitcoin DeFi a reality. In July, Twitter and Square CEO Jack Dorsey announced plans to create an open-source Bitcoin platform named TBD. Last Friday, Mike Brock, the Cash App exec heading up TBD, gave an update on Twitter, writing, quote, This is the problem we're going to solve. Make it easy to fund a non-custodial wallet anywhere in the world through a platform to build on and off ramps into Bitcoin. 
You can think about this as a decentralized exchange for fiat. Brock views TBD as a missing piece for the crypto industry, which, as currently constituted, relies on centralized third parties like Coinbase and Cash App to facilitate fiat transactions. TBD plans to build its project out in the open, completely permissionless, intending to allow any non-custodial wallet to plug into its DEX. For now, Brock and Dorsey hope to keep TBD Bitcoin native. However, as Bitcoin is not a smart contract platform like Ethereum or Solana, the tech stack must improve for TBD to succeed. Brock mentioned Rootstock, a smart contract Bitcoin sidechain, as a possible option for building out the Bitcoin DEX. However, he noted, quote, the gaps needed to build this may be too large, which would also have us consider other chains as a bridge. Speaking of Jack Dorsey, according to Mac Rumors, Twitter may soon enable users to tip creators with Bitcoin. An unreleased beta version of Twitter's code has an update that would show users how to use Bitcoin, complete with a Lightning Network tutorial and information on custodial versus non-custodial wallets. Twitter would be partnering with Strike to make this happen, if the rumor becomes reality. Next headline. The Ethereum blockchain split due to a software bug. A bug in Ethereum's most popular software client, Go Ethereum or Geth, caused the blockchain to split last Friday, August 27th. The split can be traced back to August 18th, when the Geth team initially disclosed a vulnerability in the software. At the time, the developers did not explain the nature of the bug in an effort to prevent a hack before it was patched. On August 24th, Geth released a hotfix for the bug, describing it as, quote, a high-severity security issue. By the 27th, it became clear that Geth's efforts to patch the bug fell short, as a subset of Ethereum nodes failed to update their Geth software. This resulted in a chain split where Ethereum started validating two chains at the same time. Luckily, Ethereum was not truly affected. Tim Bako, an Ethereum core developer and a previous guest on Unchained, told Decrypt, quote, The bug is serious in that it caused a chain split, but the effects on the Ethereum mainnet were negligible given that the vast majority of clients had upgraded. Next headline. Mutant Ape Yacht Club and Loot for Adventurers Expand NFT Boundaries. Two NFT collections went especially viral this week. First, on Saturday, Yuga Labs dropped its Mutant Ape Yacht Club collection, selling 10,000 zombified apes in a Dutch auction that started at 3 ETH. Mutant Ape Yacht Club is essentially a sister collection to Board Ape Yacht Club, the second largest NFT collection on OpenSea by volume. In addition to the Dutch auction of 10,000 original mutant apes, the launch consisted of an airdrop of mutant serums to existing Board Ape holders allowing them to mint mutant versions of their apes for free. The project ended up raising $96 million for Yuga Labs. At publishing time, Mutant Apes had the eighth highest volume traded on OpenSea for all time, despite being released less than a week ago. Number two, last Friday, Vine founder Dom Hoffman dropped an 8,000-piece NFT collection dubbed Loot for Adventurers. The text-based NFT collection quickly caught on. In about a week, Loot has done over $60 million in volume and currently has a market cap of $250 million plus. Rather than a standard JPEG or PNG, the 8,000 Loot NFTs contain walls of text detailing eight specific characteristics randomly generated for scarcity. Each token was minted with a different combination of weapons, chest armor, head armor, waist armor, foot armor, hand armor, necklaces, and rings. The idea, presumably, is for loot NFTs to act as a base layer for other games and protocols to interpret. Essentially, any play-to-earn or Web3 game can plug into loot, download the characteristics, and then spawn its interpretation of a loot NFT in its game. On a related note, Dom will be releasing a new NFT project in the coming weeks labeled SupDrive, which is an on-chain fantasy game console. Next headline. Ethereum Layer 2 competition heats up with launch of Arbitrum. Offchain Labs, the developer behind Ethereum Layer 2 solution Arbitrum, launched on Tuesday. The company also announced a $120 million funding round at a valuation of $1.2 billion. Arbitrum is built to scale Ethereum by using optimistic rollups, in which transactions are bundled outside of the mainnet before being posted on the Ethereum blockchain. Since launch, transactions on Arbitrum have been markedly cheaper than on Ethereum. According to The Defiant, ETH transfers cost about $1 in gas fees on Arbitrum rather than $11 on Ethereum. Uniswap trades, which require more gas than basic transfers, 
are currently executing for $5 compared to $81 on Ethereum. Next headline, Cream Finance was involved in a $25 million hack. DeFi protocol Cream Finance fell prey to a flash loan attack this week in which the hacker escaped with $25 million in crypto. PeckShield, a crypto security firm, explained the attacker was able to make off with the money due to a re-entrancy bug, which became available when Cream integrated with the AMP token, because AMP uses the ERC-777 token standard rather than the usual ERC-20 token standard. All right, time for fun bits. Crypto punks are going Hollywood. Larva Labs, the NFT developer behind CryptoBunks, MeBits, and Autoglyphs, signed a deal with United Talent Agency for representation across film, TV, video games, publishing, and licensing. According to UTA, CryptoPunks would be among the first crypto-native IP to enter the traditional entertainment world. Leslie Silverman, head of UTA Digital Assets, told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, I would say that it is one of the first opportunities for an IP that fully originated in crypto world to enter a broader entertainment space, and they earned it. They have really hit the zeitgeist in a tremendous way. All right, thanks for tuning in. To learn more about Steve, FTX, and Forbes Crypto Asset and Blockchain Advisor, be sure to check out the links in the show notes. Unconfirmed is produced by me, Laura Shin, with help from Anthony Yoon, Mark Murdoch, and Daniel Nuss. Thanks for listening.